Hello, everyone. Welcome to the most powerful, the most well put together, the most well funded live stream on TikTok. Okay. People might think, oh, this is a low production uh, sort of podcast. They, they might think the quality of this podcast is bad. Let me assure you something. We have billionaire and even trillionaire backers for this podcast. I am spreading a level of information uh, that is both uh, very positive for those in power and also very negative for the common man, the common person. So I get paid exorbitantly to do this podcast. And with that money, I, uh, you know, I buy things. This $40,000 backdrop, right? This $78,000 haircut. Someone just said the sponsor should send me a comb. Let me tell you something. The comb that went through my hair cost so much money. You could pay off your college debt with it. I don't have college debt. My parents bought me a college before I went there, uh, which is the case for most people who are pursuing the creative arts in Los Angeles. How is everyone? Welcome to the live stream podcast. I am your host, Dan. If you are watching this uh, posthumously, if you are watching this in retrospect, because I will be posting this after I am done answering your questions live. Um, I just want to remind you, we have a Patreon for $5 a month. You get an extra episode every week where you get to tell me what to do, where you get to tell me what you don't get to tell me what to do or say, but you can give me topics and ask me questions and I will be more quick to respond on there than for the regular podcast. Okay. Does that sound nice? Does it sound good for you? I've been having a great little day. Okay. Like any great little day. I went to the uh, pizza shop next to my home and there's a woman there and i'm gonna i'm gonna comment on something i want to say this before i do i respect members of the service industry i have been one and i will be one i'm sure very soon into the future right but and she's very nice the woman who works at this pizza restaurant that i go to one of the kindest sweetest people very good at her job seems to be very she brings a level of anxiety to our interaction that is completely unwarranted. She's clearly in kind of go, go, go mode, right? Which I respect. We've all been in the service industry. We've all, you know, we've all been slammed. She's even when there's no one else in the restaurant, she is in a slammed mindset. Does that make sense to you? So I'll walk in and she'd be like, yeah, yeah, be right with you, hon. And it's like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't yelling at you. It's the same energy as if I walked in there with a gun and was like, I need pizza. It's like, yeah, okay, we'll be right with you. It's like, I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. I just want to get a little slice of pizza, right? But the energy is so over the top. And I, and, and I try bringing it down. You know when you're having an interaction with somebody, they're hitting a certain level and you're like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll talk in a calm voice. They say that you should do that in an argument. If somebody is arguing and they're going, they're going really high, you shouldn't combat that with also going high and intense because that can potentially escalate things. So I tried to de-escalate, okay? I tried to do what uh, we told police officers to do two years ago and it failed, right? I tried to de-escalate the situation. I'm like, hey, yeah, uh, I just like just a slice of pizza. Okay, all right, hon. Yeah, we'll get you your slice of pizza. And it's like, oh, all right, why are you from Boston working in an L.A. pizza restaurant that is New York themed? And number two, there's no need. There was no need for that tone, but it was nice. I sat down. They were playing the basketball game, and for a second, for a brief second in my day, I felt like I was actually part of a, a community is too big of a word for what this was. I felt like I lived in a real place. So many people, th this is going to be a generalization, but I, I do really mean this. So many people don't live in a real place. We live in this sort of uh, state of being in a cube, 
next to thousands of other cubes and never the twain shall meet. You never meet your neighbors in today's world until something goes horribly wrong. People talking about this during the pandemic, they sort of they met their neighbors, you know, uh, and I think a lot of people post pandemic were like, wow, I want to, you know, there's some stuff from the from the crazy pandemic world that I would like to keep. One of which being I would like to continue to speak with my neighbors. You know what? As messed up as the world is right now, I'm going to keep crocheting. I am going to keep up my hobby of making glass sculptures of ferrets with a uh, glass that I blowtorch with a lighter and insecticide. Everybody said that. Everybody felt like we were going to keep up the things we were doing while we were in quarantine. And the only thing that some people did keep up is the amount of weed they smoked. And that's it. But the meeting the neighbors thing was really nice. And for a second, I met a few of my neighbors, not many of them. I got to say, it, it is embarrassing uh, that I lived. Because, I, listen, I did I quarantined pretty hard. Okay? I know a lot of people out there didn't. I did. I, I don't know if it ended up doing much. I'm not a stat, I'm not a statistics guy, but I did the quarantine pretty hardcore, okay? And I met a couple of my neighbors and I was like, this is nice. This feels like I live in a real place right now. It feels as though I'm an actual human being for a moment. And then I mean, boy did that just completely fade away. In this really insanely quick way, like as soon as I was able to drive my car around, I was like, fuck my morning routine. You know what I mean? It went so fast. It was a blink of an eye that I completely went from like, okay, every morning here. I'm the kind of guy every morning I meditate. I I do yoga. I do breathing exercises. And the sec, and I did that for like, you're supposed to be able to make a habit in whatever, three months or something. I was doing that for like eight months. And then the second I could go to a Fuddruckers, like inside the restaurant, and not just order from Fuddruckers, which is what I was doing during the pandemic. I would call up Fuddruckers. I would call up Fuddruckers even when they weren't open. When they shut down for uh, the quarantine, I would still call them just to hear the sweet, sultry voice of this Fuddruckers answering machine going, you, you were... You reach, you reach motherfucking Fuddruckers. I feel like that is what's going on there at Fuddruckers. I think, and I, I don't want to use hyperbole on this podcast. That's not what this podcast is for. This podcast is for seeking truth and knowledge and bravery and power and all the words that are used to sell men's courses that teach guys how to wipe their own asses. But I think when you call Fuddruckers, they go, welcome to this is motherfucking Fuddruckers. And I would call them just to feel as though I was at home once more, as though I was home in the beautiful Fuddruckers restaurant and cafe. I, I don't know if that's what it's called, but I'd like to think it's called the Fuddruckers Business Cafe. So I had all these things I was doing. That would that were like wonderful for me, but the second I could go back to restaurants, I just completely lost them. And one of the things that I lost was definitely meeting my neighbors. So I think that a lot of people live in this weird, like sort of self-contained bubble where not only do we not meet our neighbors, we like fucking hate our neighbors. The only time I think about my neighbors is when I am actively hating them and i don't know why i don't know wh where it came to that i don't know like i don't know the reason for that maybe it's just the expectation there's this motherfucker in my apartment building and i won't i won't specify the gender and i won't specify the person because god god forbid this becomes the podcast becomes at all popular in any way and i have to uh deal with them but there's a fucking person in my apartment where every time we walk by, I'd say hi. I say hi to them, 
right? I don't go, give me all your money. I don't do that. I swear. I might do that subconscious. Maybe, maybe that is happening. Maybe that's why they don't talk to me. It would be really funny if you like, uh, if you looked at the actual interaction we were having and I was like, Hey, how are you? It's like, yeah, of course she's not. Oh, uh, they're not saying hi to you. Um, but every time I walk by her, it's just like complete blank wall. It's just nothing there. And I've tried saying hi. And now it's like, now I don't say hi anymore. So we'll just walk by each other. And it's so weird and unnatural to me. And obviously it's like, listen, if you don't want to fucking talk, that's totally up to you. That's totally fine. I don't know what this person's like background is. I don't know if they've, you know, been through some sort of trauma, God forbid, but it's just really, really strange to me. But anyway, so this is the live stream. Uh, I'm going to answer questions live if anyone has them. If not, I'm just going to continue to ramble. I'm just going to mosey on down. But honestly, life's been good lately. You know what I mean? Life ain't been bad. And it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm swimming in money. It's just, you know, I've just reached a level of mild comfort that I think has been my goal. This has been my goal financially. And it, I'm not shooting high by any means. I'm not, I'm not shooting to the stars by any means. And that's probably a bad thing because I've kind of coasted out at this level of money. I just want to be able to go to a restaurant from time to time and not really worry. And there's, unfortunately, there's billionaires out there that are like, I want an island where I can freely sexually assault people. And that's that's billionaires' goals, right? Most billionaires have those aspirations. And it's unfortunate because a lot of them attain that thing that they're going for, right? That's the thing about goals is even when they're horrible, if you set them and you really go for it, you can attain what you're looking for. So I think the average man should try to get hor to try to have aspirations that of much worse people. Does that make any sense? Bad people seem to have a really good handle on aspiration. And a lot of them are also, I guess, really good at manifesting, right? Because when we think about manifesting, right, what do we think about? White women, highlights, white women with highlights. That's a big part of manifesting. And I'm not down, I'm not good, I'm not getting down on any white woman with highlights. What do you do to your hair? That's up to you, okay? But the people who are really good at manifesting are usually really bad. Or at least those are the ones that we hear about, right? Because they manifested in the wrong direction. Ted Bundy really had goals, okay? He really had goals. And they were not good goals. They were bad goals. But... He went after it. He didn't need to do ice baths in the morning. <laughs> he didn't need to journal. <laughs> Could you imagine? Now, so much is said about serial killers, right? So much. We've, we've been inundated completely as a society with serial killer material, right? And a lot of it is, like, annoying... A lot of it is like, should we really be making these? Like, aren't there family, aren't there victims to these people? And we're making like a love letter to them. And you cast a hot guy to play that serial killer. That's a fucking weird one. Because, listen, if I'm the family member of someone who is unfortunately the victim of a serial killer, which I'm not underplaying that, that's a horrible thing. Now, imagine that you're that family member. You have to go through this big process. There's a circus courtroom case about it. 
You need to relive in graphic details all the things that have happened to your loved one. And then to play the person that did all of that to you, they cast Zac Efron. Could you imagine how shitty it would feel to be a person whose life was ruined by a guy and then that guy gets played by the hottest piece of ass in the world? I mean, what are we doing? Oh, but but Ted Bunny was so hot. Hey, we're making fantasy worlds here, right, guys? We're we're making we're making make 'em ups. That's what movies are, right? They're make 'em ups. How about we cast ugly guys for the serial killers and not the hottest guys in the entire world? Maybe it sends and I listen, I don't want to I don't want to body shame here, right? But I think most people would agree that Zac Efron is a smoking hot piece of ass. Can I say that? Is it still okay in this country in the year 2023, a year that I have to look up all the time because I for, I don't know what year it is a lot of the time, and that's my struggle. That's not your problem. That's my problem. Casting Zac Efron, which I think he played Ted Bundy. I'm not sure. I, I could be speaking completely out of my ass, but I have certainly seen hot guys play serial killers in movies enough where it's like, can we get someone less conventional? Although then maybe it would be sort of a, maybe then it would be sort of one of those things where a bunch of people rally around a person who's not conventionally good looking. It's like, no, we think they're actually hot. People say that happened with Pete Davidson. I am, I am on the camp that Pete Davidson actually looks uh, pretty conventionally good looking. You know, I think they tried to pit guys against Pete Davidson in this weird way. Where, like, every woman in the world was very into the idea of fucking Pete Davidson, which I, you know, I'm all for. Hell yes. You get, you got someone you think is hot, you want to fucking drool over them, go for it. You know, that's what, in a lot of ways, that's what celebrities are there for, you know? But then they were like, uh, sorry guys who hit the gym, this is who women really want to fuck. And it's like, okay, yeah, we're not... Like, like, like guys who lift weights are going to be like, my whole life is ruined. Let's say, let's say you're one of those people making that claim, right? Let's say you're one of those people and you're going, uh, yeah. Hey guys who waste all your time trying to get big muscles. This is who women really like a guy who doesn't look like he's ever lifted weights. Are you trying to like ruin that guy's life who lift weights are you trying to make him look at a unfulfilled life and uh and feel as though it's all been for nothing because that's what it seems like you're doing let's say because i don't think for the most part i mean i'm sure trying to have women be attracted to you is a big reason why guys lift weights right that's probably a big reason it's not the only reason I, I like lifting weights for a lot of reasons to um, carry a ton of groceries at once. That feels that feels better than most of the sex that I've had. Right. Yeah. Some people, someone in the chat just gave a great point. Some people lift weights to make uh, men attracted to them. I would say that's honestly probably more effective if we're really if we're going to get down to it. That's probably more effective. But they tried to pit straight guys against Pete Davidson, and I, I'm not for that. I like to see, I like to see a fellow man winning. Okay, I like to see a fellow dude doing his best out here. And I'll go on record for saying that me and Pete Davidson, we couldn't look different. More, we couldn't look more different. He's like six foot three. I'm like six foot two. No, I'm kidding. I'm five foot ten. He's skinny. I'm built a little wider. He has millions and millions of dollars. I do a podcast out of my kitchen. That doesn't mean we can't still be happy for a dude winning, right? But they tried They tried to sow discord in the fella community, right? They tried to get us all riled up against Pete Davidson. Oh, this is actually what we think is hot. Great. Good for you. Why do you waste all that time in the gym? Hey, we're not doing it for you, okay? 
We don't do it for you. Do you understand? But um, they should, I mean, here's the, here's what will be the final straw for me. When they do another serial killer documentary, which will be the four millionth serial killer documentary, and they cast Pete Davidson as the uh, lead role, that is when I'm shutting it down. I can't take it anymore. All right. Are you trying to tell us that serial killing is bad or are you trying to get us to want to fuck serial killers? Really? What are we doing? Okay. You're sending us as a society, as a community, mixed messages here. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very strange. It's very strange. Zach Efron could have been playing some guy that. I don't know, hold Chevron accountable for their misdeeds in South America. He could have been playing that guy. But no, he was busy doing playing a role where we try to make a serial killer look awesome. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know if it's like this in other in other countries either. I don't I I I, I really couldn't tell you. Maybe Maybe they're uh, of intrigue in all countries. Or maybe in, like, Japan, they're just super into arsonists. <laughs> in, like, I don't know, in in, uh, in Milan, they're super into people who commit petty crimes, like, who are into embezzlement. They're just like, oh, yeah, did you see that new embezzler documentary? You're in, in Italy. They're just super into people who do tax frauds. It's like, oh, my God. Did you see that documentary on Giuseppe Giuseppe? The world's most prolific tax frauder. He's so dreamy, even though what he did was not was very naughty. <laughs> I would love that. I would love the discussion. The same thing going on. But it's about like we should. Why don't we do that? Honestly. I'm not saying across the board tax fraud is a better crime to commit than murder. I don't know. I'm going to say I'm going to say if you told me you committed tax fraud, I'm going to be a lot more lenient than if you said I have committed murder. I've had more people admit that they've committed murder in my life than I have had people com uh, admit to committing tax fraud. That shows you where I am in my life okay that if you want to know how well you're doing financially don't look at your ba bank statements that's not accurate right look at what crimes people are taking you to the side and telling you they have committed if it's tax fraud embezzlement uh money laundering you're usually gonna be in a pretty good place you're you're not doing too bad for yourself if that is the case okay if people are pulling you to the side and saying that they have committed murders, I'm sorry, you work construction. You work construction. And there's nothing wrong with working construction, but that is just where you are, okay? But I do, I, I would love if other countries were just super, why don't we get, just get super into guys who did tax fraud the way we get into serial killers? They're... Okay, a lot of the times they're more financially intelligent. We could learn something from them. They game the system. They do live playboy lives of excess and wonder. Why don't we want to fuck those guys? Because they're nerds. Can we get over this, this disdain of nerds? We have figured out time and time again they were right. They chose the right thing to be. Okay? We got to get over it. We got to get over the obsession with serial killers in this country. I don't like it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. They don't do anything for me. I, I, have, I have been left completely out of the loop when it comes to this fascination with them. I don't know why people are... I, I tried watching one of the documentaries because just every everyone I knew... Mostly women, okay, not to generalize, but that's mo mostly the people who are telling me to watch this. And 
lo and behold, I was just like, oh, yeah, it's a guy who had a really fucked up childhood and then did bad things to other people. When is I mean, that's always the story. Tell me when there's one about a guy who, like, lived a perfect life and then still ended up just, you know. Oh, somebody somebody in the comments said there's Wolf of Wall Street. That's a good but there there's just one. There's just one of those. Wolf of Wall Street is actually a great example of uh of what I'm talking about. Like, imagine if there was Wolf of Wall Street, right? Which was I love that movie. I thought that movie was great. I thought it was fun to watch. I had a fun time watching it. There are going to be some movie stops who say I'm stupid and I will say I will be stupid and happy. I will choose stupidity and happiness almost every time. As long as it is not the expense of another person, I will take dumb every single time. So Wolf of Wall Street came out. It was about Jordan Belfort. He, uh, he was, I believe, taken in for insider trading as well as a slew of other financial crimes, right? Played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Haughty, right? Even even for that movie, hot, hot piece of ass. Now, imagine if we're going to keep with this comparison. Imagine if then we had four other movies back to back all about financial criminals who people find hot. People would go, hmm, this is a little bit weird. This is strange. Okay. And listen, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but no one really wants to fuck Bernie Madoff. I don't even think his wife really wanted to fuck him. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Not a lot of people wanted to have sex with Bernie Madoff. And again, he did some bad stuff. He fucked over a lot of people. But there was not a national outcry of, we would all, I would like to say, but there were for the Nightcrawler, who was objectively, uh, I don't know if you could say, obje listen, you get to these weird conversations where it's like Bernie Madoff ruined a lot of people's lives. The Nightcrawler ruined a lot of people's lives. Both very bad. You know what I mean? Both very bad. I'm going to say viscerally, Nightcrawler worse. Okay? I'm going to go on record and say that. But people were trying to, People were trying to suck the Nightcrawler's dick. Could you imagine that? All those heinous crimes could not have been more in the wrong, could not have picked more innocent victims. People were trying to suck him off. And no one felt that way for Bernie. And I think that shows, at the end of the day, a lack of financial literacy in this country. Okay? Okay? At the end of the day, it shows a lack of financial literacy in this country. They should make, this is just me, I'm giving away a free idea here. Let's see if it goes the other way too. I want to see a Lizzie Borden. I, I actually don't know how old. Let's, let's, let's do a quick Google right now. I'm going to see how old Lizzie Borden was. Lizzie Borden. Uh, she was in Fall River, and she committed an axe murder. She was, drumroll please, um, she was, oh, it said 66 years old. That's not uh, age when killed parents. There we go. It said 39? Okay, hell yes. All right, we're going to do, we're going to make Lizzie Borden sexy as all hell we're gonna make her snatched she's gonna be serving she's gonna be serving everything you know what i mean serving the c word i don't know how youtube okay if you can't say serving the c word on youtube that's homophobia on youtube's part and that's messed up but let's make let's make lizzie borden fucking sexy as all hell 
let's cast who was the the woman lead in Wolf of Wall Street? That's who will play Lizzie Borden. And oh, I I mean, there's just there's just going to be a scene where she's masturbating with the axe. She's going to have like a yeah, she's going to have like hatchet sex with some guys. Margot Robbie, thank you very much. Margot Robbie is going to play Lizzie Borden. Let's see if it has the same effect on guys, okay? Because again, there is an underrepresentation. Women can do anything, okay? And it's important that we get stories like Lizzie Borden's out there to understand that women can also be. Here's the. Oh my God, I just realized this. Wow. Similar to the uh, the Salem witch trials. Whenever women get the spunk and tenacity to finally commit atrocious acts, it is always blamed on possession and witchcraft. Lizzie Borden was said to have been possessed by the devil. The Salem witch trial women were... When can we give women credit where credit is due, okay? They came up on their own. That wasn't the damn devil. That was Lizzie all the way. Let's not take credit away from these beautiful women who committed these heinous, heinous crimes. It's nice talking about Lizzie Borden too, because I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but I feel like when the murders happen over like 120 years, it's not going to cause as big of a stir. I don't think anyone's great, great grandchild is going to speak out and be like, this is disrespectful to a woman I never met, but saw really weird pictures of once as a child. You never meet your great, great grandma. You usually never meet your great grandma. I I met my great grandma and I saw one picture of her when she was younger and that was it. So great, great grandma, totally out seems like free game if you made a documentary about the lizzie or not a documentary a a sexy steamy thriller about the lizzie border murder starring mar oh my god just margot robbie in like 1800s clothing but she's still making it fucking work she's still just absolutely cinching it up she looks snatched she looks fucking amazing okay she's putting her whole pussy into the role as the kids say. I mean. Amazing. And if the kids speak out. If the kids speak out. Get something better to do kids. I mean. I'm not talking about the children. Because the children are long gone too. I'm talking about like the great great grandchildren. Of the Lizzie Border victims. It's just like, don't you have a job? (laughs) Don't you have a job? Let us get horny looking at Margot Robbie holding an axe. Okay? There's simply... Because it's almost like... It's almost like how oh i lost my train of thought for a second wait i'll get it back give me one moment this happens sometimes if if you listen to the podcast this is just something you have to get used to my brain is um is fundamentally uh not well and sometimes i will lose the thread of things but yeah i i say we do that i say we show women you know doing their thing i say we make it glamorous I say we make it sexy. Don't do one of these. Do murders from way back when, too. Because there was a thing that happened that I think overall was a good thing. I'm going to say this. Overall, it was a good thing. People started more and more to hold the creators of uh, television and movies accountable for the things that they're showing. Because there's a high level of exploitation, especially when you're going way like like back in time talking about a subject you don't really know about, right? 
there's mixed mischaracterizations of certain people. All that's good. All that's good. But what happened recently is people started to use that and go like with the last Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, whatever series, they were like, no, this is actually like a woke reclaiming of Jeffrey Dahmer. And it's like, really? Cause you're pretty much just doing a TV show about him. It's like, no, it's showing how like he preyed on, on victims of color. It's like, he absolutely did. That's an important thing to talk about when you're talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. How about we show some, some of the great things that people who have been left on the margins have done. We can display those on films and not show them getting murdered by a white guy, right? Because again, I mean, I'm again, he certainly it was bad stuff that he was doing. And but I think that we've just like we've come to this point where we've kind of circled around and it's like, no, to be woke, we're gonna show like these people of color getting you know kidnapped by jeffrey dahmer and it's like i don't know who really wants i don't know who was raising their hand and going what i want to see is me represented as someone who gets uh kidnapped and murdered by a, a crazy guy and it's like okay well how, we could do that but I think it's a little disingenuous. I think the reason why you made Jeffrey Dahmer was because, you know, serial killers like people are into serial killers. People love serial killer shit, but you had to justify it because you knew making another serial killer documentary was going to be a touchy subject. So you had to like kind of put this stamp of fucking like, oh, no, we're also being good people by making this. And it's like, if you're going to do it, you have freedom of speech. You can make anything you want in this country. But. I mean. That one is just not necessary. You know, I saw. Uh, I saw belly recently it was directed by i'm i'm i do want to give credit to the director belly director hype williams yes hype williams who usually directs music videos but he had his hand in directing uh this movie belly it was 10 out of 10 so good so creative and jeffrey dahmer wasn't depicted once right that was great. I th I feel like that does a lot more for everybody involved and makes everybody a little bit more happy than to just kind of th throw this like kind whatever put on wokeness onto the Jeffrey Dahmer story. I think white dudes, especially, uh bad white dudes who have done insanely horrible things have had enough of the limelight, right? I think that they've had enough of the limelight. And I don't think that we need to retouch on the JD story any more than we already have. That rock has been turned over. That rock has been turned over um was i planning on talking about all that no 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 i was planning on talking about getting a little slice of pizza at the pizza store that is on my way on my little walk that i take but it's fun that we got into it as a group a very small group but as a group we got into it and we really, I think, talked about that as much as it could possibly be talked about. What else is going on? I've, I'm for the first night in many nights. I am uh, not rushing to do an open mic, so I was able to clean my apartment a little bit. And I don't know about you guys, but so much of my energy is just completely spent and drained. I usually come back to a disgusting, disgusting apartment, regardless of how many dishes I do. 
Um, it just feels good. You got to do that. I, this is a nice little reminder to everybody. You putting off cleaning your apartment, probably not the move. I, I get locked into this mindset where I go, but I'm, and this is embarrassing to admit, but I'm like, I'm building something bigger. I don't need to clean my apartment. My aspirations are so much bigger than cleaning. I can't waste my time. I'm building an empire. I don't actually think, I don't think the words I'm building an empire, but that is kind of the shitty thing that goes on in my head that stops me from cleaning my apartment. I kind of go like, oh no, like, Dude, you can't be cleaning your apartment. You need to be coming up with ideas. And then I never come up with the ideas either. I end up doing five pull-ups and then sitting on my floor and scrolling through TikTok and calling that productive. This is my message to you as a listener. Maybe what you're building is great. Maybe you're working towards a beautiful artistic project that all of us are going to watch and be in awe of. But, but, before you do that, Get the socks off your floor, okay? Get the socks off your floor. Um, That was the live stream. That was the live podcast. I hope you all enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun talking about it. But um, again, the Patreon, $5 a month. I'll put the link in the bio. Please subscribe to the YouTube. Please watch all the episodes. It really helps me out. Thank you all very much.